Hey everybody, welcome to Shape by Dog. I am Susan Garrett. And if you own a dog, there is a very good chance that at some point in your dog's life, they are going to get jumped, possibly attacked by another dog. And believe it or not, how you respond to that event could actually exasperate the damage, the emotional damage done to your dog or puppy. And I would like to make sure that that doesn't happen to you. So sometimes these um, jumpings happen when you're walking your dog in the neighborhood, or a lot of the times it happens at dog parks or doggy daycare, neither of which I am massive fans of, but with a big asterisk because there are some very, very good puppy daycares. I was actually at one last week. So more on that later. But sometimes it's not even, there's nothing you can do. Just yesterday, my 11-week-old puppy, this was jumped. I use that quote, jumped at her puppy class. The owner of the older puppy who chased her down was super apologetic. And I'll get to more on what happened and what I did later. But it could have been a very emotionally traumatic experience for this because she took off running and ended up uh, running into a corner and hiding behind a garbage can. And when I got her out, she actually, for the first time in her life, growled at this other puppy. So cliffhanger, more on that later. You're, you may be familiar with the term helicopter parent. And that's somebody who goes around and I've seen it firsthand, goes around and tries to control the experiences of their child. So nothing bad ever happens to them. You know, they, they swoop in like a helicopter. They swoop in if the child, you know, um, trips and falls, not even waiting to see if the kid gets up and brushes himself off. And research has shown this actually can lead to some huge anxiety problems and even depression as those children get older. Flip side of that, my younger brother, him and his wife, they've got, they're great parents. They've got two great kids. And Jason was telling me about teaching his four-year-old to ride a two-wheeler bike. And she was getting really good. And at the end of their street, at their cul-de-sac, there's this big hill. And uh, he would always tell her to stop and use the brakes and go down this hill, which she always did. But one day she went flying by and she was a confident kid and said, out of my way, daddy, and went flying down this hill, looking over her shoulder at her dad. And then looking over the shoulder caused the front wheel to start wobbling. And sure enough, she went over the handlebars and Jason said, skidded to a stop on her face. So she got up screaming, as you could imagine, and she had a big cut on her, scratch on her face, on her chin, and she's boo-hooing and crying. And by the time Jason caught up to her, she was getting back on her bike and just boo-hooing and keep on pedaling. That's the kind of response you want for my, a five-year-old. I mean, ideally, there's no broken bones jetting out, but that's the opposite of a helicopter parent. And I actually found a term which I found fascinating. It's called a dolphin parent. And when I was doing research for this podcast, and a dolphin parent is somebody who is playful and supportive, but still has very discreet rules for their children. Um, and when I was reading this, I immediately thought of Momentum. Um, Momentum was definitely a dolphin parent, the way she raised her puppies, that she was super playful and supportive and encouraging and built up confidence in all of them. But um, she's very clear with rules. And now with this still living with her, if I actually call this and she doesn't come, momentum will actually tell her off, which is kind of funny. Anyway, I digress. Helicoptering, I think a lot of people recognize is bad, but is not the best thing for the child. And it's not the best thing for your puppy either, because you aren't allowing them to learn the, the consequences of their behavior. You're not allowing them to learn how to recover when they stumble. We want that to happen without your interference. And, you know, it's kind of related to episode number 12, where I talked about how your helping isn't really helping. Allow the puppy or dog to learn from their experiences. Now, if your dog or puppy gets jumped, and I'm not going to talk today about um, how to break up a dog fight or anything like that. I'm just talking about the aftermath because this is, I think, something that's really not well understood and, and it's difficult. What I'm going to suggest to you is going to be difficult for you to get right, even though it's simple. 
it's going to be very simple, but very difficult. So if your dog gets jumped, there could be a negative conditioned response happening with that puppy. So the science would call it single event learning. And you know, in fight or flight animals, it's important that they learn from bad things that happen because, you know, back in their brain and the, you know, back in the Neanderthal days for dogs, were there dogs back with Neanderthals? I like to think so. That, um, that kept them alive because they have to learn from the getting out of the clutch of a lion that, gay, that, that was a good thing. And you better do that again. Single event learning is often associated you know, here's the thing for all of us wanting to train our dogs. It's associated with things that are very scareful or, or potentially painful more so than things that are, um, things that we, you know, wouldn't it be great if our dogs learn not to potty in the house with a single event learning doesn't happen very often. Okay. So what happens when a dog gets jumped is that they get an attachment to, there is a conditioned negative response and it could be to the environment. So they may not want to go back to that geographical area. If you were like walking by a house, it could be that they learn all houses with fences. If it was a dog came out from under a fence or over a fence and got them, they might not want to go buy houses with fences. It could be a, a negative emotional attachment to the dog, to the size or the breed or the color or the sex or the smell of the dog. Um, so there's no controlling what, like what the dog gets a negative attachment to. Um, and you will notice this because the dog will quite often have an avoidance, either an avoidance of going near that situation or avoidance of being around that dog. And it could happen immediate right after this event happens, they could then now not want to be anywhere near that dog. They might've expressed their anal glands that might, depending on how bad it was. And it could also lead to aggression. And believe it or not, I saw both of those in this, my 11 week old puppy. What happened this weekend was we were playing at different stations and I am trying to be very aware of what all the other dogs in the classroom are doing because I know I'm a lot of fun and I know that encourages other puppies to want to be with me. Uh, but I had my back turned uh, this and I were about to play at a station that had a lot of inflated discs, kind of fitness discs. And so I was just about to do that. And I saw the corner of my eye. I saw this dog coming. So I went to grab her, but she saw the dog as well. And she took off. And of course her taking off caused the, the dog to chase her and was, and it was an older puppy. I'm guessing five or six months old. It was a border collie as I said, it chased her into the corner and she got in behind a garbage can and was obviously very scared. The owner grabbed the dog, was super apologetic, took the dog away. I got this out and she wouldn't engage with the tug toy. First thing I do, here, get that thing. See, puppies chase you and then you get that thing. And she would engage with that tug toy. And she kept staring at the dog and then she started growling at the other puppy. So immediately I had to change her state, change her physiology, right? So I took off running and she chased me and then I did a little hand touch and then she tugged and then me immediately went on to all of these different inflatable discs. So everyone looked very different and everyone gave her the opportunity to engage with something different. And then she tugged again, she got cookies and tugged and all of that happened within seconds of that dog chasing her. Now I want to acknowledge she wasn't physically harmed. She was just really, really scared. Nothing like that has ever happened to her. However, that could be the start of some real phobias that could develop for your puppy if that happens to you. I have had this happen more than once. So Swagger had a, a similar event, but worse where the dog actually jumped him and shook him and grabbed him and Swagger got away and the dog hunted him down and got him again. Swagger was a little older. He was five months old at the time, but it still created a very similar response, avoidance, and then growling at this dog or growling at any dog that looked like him. And then Swagger actually started attacking puppies like the next day, if he saw a puppy to attack it. But we fixed all of that. And I'm going to share with you what played into that. Okay. So I read this book, mm, it was several years ago by uh, Jane McGonigal. The book was called Reality Versus Broken, Why Games Make Us Better. And in the book, she talked about how if you suffer a traumatic ex or see something that is very traumatic, a way that you can prevent PTSD is to immediately start playing a game like Candy Crush or Tetris. And what these are uh, visually 
pattern, like his pattern matching games. And what that does is it prevents the brain from forming the visual memories of that traumatic event. It's amazing how the brain works. And so Jane McGonigal has this quote, play, don't replay. Now, I'm not saying what I'm doing with my dog is preventing PTSD or if that PTSD even it can happen in a dog. What I'm saying is play, don't replay is a big part of what I've always done when my dogs have been jumped by other dogs. And like I said, I don't think I've owned a dog. I don't know, feature and, and momentum probably, I don't think have been jumped by other dogs. But I, I've rehearsed a way of going. So I'm going to give you what to do once you get your dog out. Now, our human reaction, especially if you're just minding your own business, walking down the street and somebody's dog gets away from them and then they jump them. Or as I was, I was in puppy class. My puppy's minding her own business and we were just playing and this other puppy came over and chased her. It's easy to get angry. We are angry. We're angry because we want the best for our puppies. We don't want anything bad to ever happen. So we have to turn that emotion towards somebody else. So we start, what the heck is wrong with you? Why didn't you have a hold of your dog? What, what is that dog? Doing? And you scream. And all of that just adds more emotional fire to the fear your puppy or dog is feeling. You can't control what happened. You can't control that other person or their dog. Having that other person feel bad about themselves or their dog, or having that other person feel guilty or shame doesn't change what happened. So a great motto for life is to always check. Is my emotion or negative emotion related to something outside of my control? Am I mad because somebody in another car just cut me off? You can't control that. You can only control your emotional response. He cut you off. You hit the brakes. You get everyone safe and go, woo, he must have been in a hurry. Wow. I bet his pants are on fire sitting in that car. So you've got to practice responding to something that maybe sends you from zero to a thousand on the anger scale and redirect it to something, especially when your dog is around. I mean, the only way you're going to get good at this is rehearsing it in everyday life behind the wheel. Things that happen that are nothing you can control. They're out of your other people you can't control. You can only control your responses to them. So if your dog gets jumped, most importantly, like I don't even remember seeing that other woman come and get her dog. I don't remember. The only reason I would have even been able to tell you what dog it was is because she apologized a quadrillion times to me. So what I did is I just kind of put my arm and got the dog out of there. I got this. I started immediately trying to play. She was avoiding. I changed her state by running and back and forth with her. I got her engaged. I went immediately to the station with the blow up things. We played some stuff. Everything was lighthearted and playful. And then I, it was a very short session and I put her away and then I brought her back out and I did it again. So play, don't replay. Again, it's like when my Jack Russell twice got jumped at the end of an agility run, white screaming little dog. And then she, she came outside of the ring and then a big dog jumped her and get the dog off and immediately get that thing. This is what happens. You do agility, you get jumped and then you get that thing. That's the way it is. And when I get my dog away, then I go up and talk to the person. By that point, I've calmed down. And a lot of the times I will say, if it is your dog friendly, in this case, I knew this puppy was friendly. It's just a puppy who got excited by me playing with my dog. And so I asked her, do you think after class, um, we could allow these puppies to meet each other? I don't want this to think there are dogs that are going to kill her out there. And so they had a nice meet and greet after, and that might not always be the best idea if your dog has been injured or if there's a chance that that other dog might be bad to your dog, don't do it. I've had people who say, after their dog has jumped my dog, can you bring your dog around? And I could tell if their dog jumped my dog with a malicious intent. No. Can you bring your dog around? I want to correct my dog and let them know that's not right. No, no. That is not in the best interest of my dog. You sort out your business and I'll sort out mine. So three parts to this. Your dog gets jumped. 
You want to control your emotions, number one. Number two, make sure your dog isn't physically hurt in any way. And if so, get to a veterinarian immediately. Even if it's uh, just a puncture wound that doesn't go very deep, you don't know what's below that surface, right? And play with the dog, throw cookies on the ground, get them to engage with you somehow, change their physiology until they engage with you. And then create a plan to help counter condition any possible negative emotional response that have been attached to that incident. Obviously, the best thing to do is always to be on top of things so you know what other dogs in your environment. But as the saying goes, poop happens and sometimes things are outside of your control. And so what happens then is how you control yourself in order to make the absolute best out of a bad situation for your dog so that the absolute best case scenario is your dog looks to you and you aren't losing your poop yelling at somebody. Your dog looks to you and you are just zoned in on them and go, hey, let's run over here and let's do something else. And that's the first step to great recovery. You're going to have to practice this though. I remember I said, it's not going to be easy. It's simple. It's just not going to be easy. Start looking for your everyday life, things that are outside of your control that you kind of lose it a little bit and you really shouldn't be losing it. All right. I want to step back to puppy daycare. Uh, Last week, I went to a, a good friend of mine who runs a puppy camp, she calls it. And these are great. She has an X pen that she puts puppies of a similar age that she knows will interact very well, happily with each other. And she won't put another puppy in that group unless she knows they will interact very happily with each other. And because this was, this is first time at puppy camp, she had a little X pen on the outside of that group. So this could see the other dogs because she'd never seen non-border collies before. She could watch them. And when her confidence showed through her episode number four, her temp, T-E-M-P, when she looked like, hey, I really want to meet those other puppies, then we put her inside. That's a structured, organized puppy play that will help bring out the best in your puppy. But as I said before, not all doggy daycares are conscientious and structured and good. So don't just turn your dog's psyche over to just anybody. You be the best advocate for your puppy. Now, one other thing I want to say to you, If you are on Instagram and you do Instagram stories, we've got dogs that emojis. There's a shape by dog emoji. There's a swipe up emoji. There's all kinds of cool emojis. When you go to the emojis in Instagram, just type in dogs that, D-O-G-S-T-H-A-T, and you're going to see some of our personalized emojis. Feel free to use them. Let's spread the good word about shape by dog. I'll see you next time.